Welcome back folks. Certainly it's nice to see you here again. If you're new to our channel, my name is Rick and with my wife Lori, my adoring wife Lori, my amazing wife Lori, together we're building our retirement dream which is a 31 and a half foot diesel trawler right here in our own backyard. This week's video is exciting. Well for us it's exciting. I hope you're ready. This has been a very long time coming. In case you didn't notice, I'm sitting here in the foredeck in a sea of white primer. Anyways, so without any further ado, let's get the show in the water. Well, it's time to get suited up with all the safety gear, folks. Uh, we're going to be spraying some primer with a very nasty solvent in it, xylene, and uh, taking as much precaution as I can with the equipment I have, but uh, full respirator, Tyvek jacket, gloves, and uh, as you can hear in the background, the fans are going wide open. This is how you attach the System 3 uh, tub to the, or whatever you want to call it, to the spray gun. And it's pretty simple. It's a little tough to get on, but it works well. After every use of the gun, you basically have to clean it with this primer. And one of the first things you have to do is set your fan size, your airflow, and the volume of paint that you want to come out. So a few tests and it's ready to go. The first part I primed was under the eyebrow because I knew it was going to be a pain in my neck, literally. Working at an odd angle. Um, as you'll see in a second here, the air hose became an issue as well. So far, so good. Um, here you can see where the hose is this blue hard plastic type and it was a real pain in the butt it goes where it wants to go and no matter what I did I couldn't get it to, to quit interfering with my holding the gun and I couldn't always keep the spray gun as far away from the surface I wanted to paint and uh, caused a few drips and runs but we can deal with that You can see here where the hose is attached to the gun, there's uh, an air dryer, an inline air dryer. And that thing is about three and a half, four inches long. And it, I could probably eliminate that. I have an air cooler and an auxiliary tank and water separators on the compressor. So I might try that next time. The primer I'm using here is Rust-Oleum's Marine Primer, and it's not a high build primer, uh, which is a little disappointing, but anyways, I'm new at this, and the seam where the windscreens meet the forward cabin had a fairly heavy fiberglass seam, and I worked really hard at fairing it, and this primer just actually worked beautifully in covering it all up. You can see some of the red lipstick here that's about to get painted over and once the primer's on you cannot tell that it was ever there. So far so good. Uh, I'm really liking how this setup works but as you'll see a little later on uh, it does have some quirks and uh, I've learned to get past them but uh, it caused a few messes. Moving on to the forecastle deck here, things got a little more intricate. Uh, it was a little harder to get into some of the tighter spots, but uh, I think all in all it worked pretty well. Um, 
as you can see I'm on my knees again and I didn't wear my knee pads because they're filthy and you can see I'm also in my sock feet which are now dirty because my shoes were even dirtier and I didn't want to drag that all up in the foredeck uh, so it got caught up in the primer. trying to spray under the cleat that's going to support the cap rail and I'm not sure I got it all so I'll eventually go back with a brush and make sure that everything's thoroughly covered. I stuck the hatch covers in just so they'll get a coat of paint. Uh, it's not the final finish by any uh, means but uh, I had it would have had to have masked off the holes anyway so Let's not waste any paint. Let's get it on the boat. So this area of the forecastle deck has had quite a bit of sanding and fairing, uh, multiple sessions of it, and it was quite nice to see that the primer was covering it really well. You'll have to excuse me for almost this entire video having my back to you, but I had to put the camera in a position where I would be able to retrieve it without having to walk across wet paint. So unfortunately the camera was behind me for most of this whole process. This was one little part where I was able to get off my knees for a change. It was a bit of a relief but as you can see the, the hose and the air dryer and everything is causing a few issues with being able to get the gun low enough to paint all these uh, tough little spots. So this is a little interesting. Uh, Lori had come out, she wanted to see the whole process. So I put her to work and gave her one of our sport cameras to uh, get some maybe close up shots or action shots or whatever. And uh, I think she was quite impressed with the whole process, except shortly here, things were gonna go haywire. So here's the first sign that things are going wrong. The cup has started to leak. I sped this up a couple of times uh, just to make it a little easier to digest. There's probably not much worse than watching paint dry as watching some poor bugger trying to spray paint his whole boat. There's a lot going on here. Um, painting the side decks and they're fairly narrow. It's a wonder my big fat butt fits there. But anyways, I have to work backwards, step at a time. And uh, again, I was having problems with the hose. Couldn't get it to go where I wanted. And uh, I had to also make sure I didn't fall off the side of the boat. This 
this is where the issue with the uh, paint cup leaking really started to accelerate. You can see the drops of white paint on the surface, and uh, I should have probably wiped them off, but anyways, this whole surface is going to have to be sanded anyways before the next coat's put on. I guess it's a little peculiarity with this cup system. It has a disposable liner that uh, eventually develops a vacuum and you have to actually learn how to burp the cup uh, to prevent that inner liner from collapsing and that's what caused the spill. So by this time we're maybe halfway through painting the whole foredeck and I'm really starting to feel it in my knees and my back. I don't know if I'm going to make it. And this is some of Lori's up close camera work. Not bad. So at this point in the job, it's I'm having one of those moments like, what the hell did I get myself into? Did I really think that I could do this? Well, I had my doubts, but anyways, we soldiered on, got the job done. As you'll see, doesn't look too, too bad. At this point, I think I'm running out of uh, paint in my cup because the volume seemed to drop off pretty drastically. Just a little jump back in time here. You can see, uh, A, Lori is gotten into the job and wiped up some of the mess. It was a pretty big spill of paint. I figure about maybe 150 milliliters. What's that? About six ounces ended up that had to be cleaned up. Now you would never know that we made a big messy. Anyways, it covered pretty good. You can't see it. Certainly, the paint's on the boat, and that was the whole goal behind this process was getting paint on the boat. She's quite the camera person. Look at that low angle shot. Well, that's intense. This was another area that was hard to fare. Uh, overlapping seams of fiberglass, especially heavy fiberglass, uh, stand up proud and they require quite a bit of sanding and filling and fairing. And uh, as you can see here, I'm laying on a little bit of extra primer just to make sure I get it covered. This is the next day and I don't have my camera person with me, so uh, I'm on my own. I've set the camera up on the eyebrow. And again, I have to apologize. My back is going to be to you quite a bit and you won't be able to see as well. But um, I carried on and uh, got the rest of the four, uh, four deck cabin folks all, all primed.
I'm starting to work my way backwards and finishing the uh, forward cabin top and I have to be careful where I'm standing and where I'm going and where I place my hands because there's wet primer everywhere and uh, as you'll see I end up on my knees again backing out down the side steps to get them painted on the way uh, to finishing this project. Again, I apologize for having my back to you, but had I placed the camera on the shed facing the other direction, I would have had to have left it there for a good four or five hours before I could retrieve it. Hey, at least I'm putting my best side forward here, folks. <laughs> So we're going to leave this one off right here with this great shot. Uh, I mean, it was just stellar videography. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you all for looking in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our videos. If you have, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to our channel. And ring the little bell so you'll get notified. So until next time, uh, from Laurie and I, thank you very much. And we hope you're all well, happy, and safe. Cheers.